There we go. I'm just finishing up putting on some clear gel and white, about 50-50 mix, right up here on the, on the top half of the canvas. Maybe a little, a little bit on our waterfall. Maybe. That works. Could even do some in the water, although I don't normally do that. I'm really putting too much on. But anyway, just a thin coat is all you want. Now, as you can see, I've done a basic sketch. And we'll just start here with a little blue. That's a good place to start. Just a soft background. Put this blue somewhere around in through here. Yep, that's good. This is just a color that we're going to use really to work our other colors into. Okay, now this is already painted. It's already got white paint on it. I just put it on clear gel and white. So I don't have to cover the whole thing with really too much of this blue. I can kind of leave it with that white and just barely give it a tint of blue. Probably can't really tell that I even put blue on it. And that's good. Go over my mountain, go over where my waterfall is going to go. You know, we're going to play around with this. Hey, we should look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. It was really fun to see your version. It's always exciting. So definitely share using the special page or the hashtag on the screen. But I, I do want to place just a little bit of that up right here. We'll use this as kind of base tones. We'll work our, our rocks and whatnot. So I'm kind of just laying down these colors. Just laying down these colors, keeping it soft and pale. Honestly, you may have heard me say this before. It's easier to paint bold than it is to paint uh, soft and subtle. There, I'm just finishing up placing on the highlight of some grass. A couple of rocks, but nothing crazy. Nothing crazy at all, actually. Now, maybe over here, let's get a little more. This is all dry. Let's just get a little bit of dark, just with that kind of grass color, just a, a simple green, very simple. Let's see about getting some of that worked up here into what's going to be trees. Um, right up in here. I like this fogginess, you see, just by really just by kind of outlining that waterfall, leaving it blank. I didn't paint it. I painted it obviously with white on the canvas already, but I didn't do anything extra to it. Just a little darker. See what I did? I went right into my blue and my black even little white, just whatever's kind of laying around on the palette. And I'm working now into a little bit more of the shadow on this side. Not too much. See, about it's about building these layers slowly and carefully because, you know, it's very easy to just make it a little darker. It's kind of hard to make it lighter. And you can, you can wipe the canvas and kind of paint over it. So it's, it's okay either way. But I'm just trying to do it right the first time. because It's always faster to do it right the first time than it is to do it right the second time, if you know what I mean. So that's why I'm kind of going slowly to accommodate for that. Well, now I'm placing in these little rocks and kind of just the, the shoreline. This is, of course, going to be a little, little riverbed here. It's pretty interesting. I'm still using very soft colors here. Very, very soft. Maybe we can go ahead and just get a tiny, very faint, just barely touching the canvas, tiny amount of detail back here. I think any, any large amount of detail is going to absolutely mess up this effect. So just the faintest little detail. In fact, it may need to stand back. That's why they have a long handle so you can stand back. But look at that. See how just a stroke or two, just barely touching that canvas with a little bit of gray just makes a difference. Anyway, you can play around with this. It takes very little <laughs> to get a big result when you're, when you're using these pastel colored tones. Very little is required. It might almost be too dark, but I, I, and I do want it to kind of stand out. I don't want it to be too blank because, you know, after all, I mean, you can see it now, but once we get our big trees in front, it's going to be harder to see it. So you make it a little more pronounced, it's probably a good thing. So now I've got a light tan color mixed up. You, you'll notice by how few color piles we really haven't been mixing much. We've kind of been just pulling grays around and it's mostly gray. And now we're finally starting to get into some warmth here. A little bit of warmer color. And you'll notice my underpainting is very light today. If you go with a dark underpainting, you're going to have a very bold, punchy painting. If you have this lighter underpainting, as you see that I'm doing here, you're going to have a much less bold, much less punchy painting. See? It's so easy to get too bold with your color. So I'm going to spread that out. That's too bold. I'll move some of this down here. There we go. I'll blend that into what we have. Okay, now as we go back, you're going to use less paint. I'm going to use a little bit of just some of my gray that was left over. And I'm going to begin to see melt that into this. Good. 
And then again, just lighter, lighter, lighter as we go back. Good. That's our little waterfall river thing. Blend all that together. Looks about right. I kind of did my rocks out of order, but it won't hurt anything. This is going to be another little waterfall here. You know, it'll look something like that. I'm going to go ahead and just pull with my darks there. I've got a soft gray that's very similar to just everything that's going on up here. And I'm just going to create a few trees. You know, really not anything too terribly intense. I'm doing the tree trunks first. You can do them after you put the highlights on the trees, or you don't have to. You do them first, doesn't matter. This way, maybe they'll kind of get buried in the forest a little. Might look more natural. That's a fairly close-up tree. Maybe a little lighter. Watch this. You can go just a little lighter. Let me wipe off that brush. It's kind of have that has that muddy brown in it, and I think I'd rather have more of a kind of a lighter. Something with a blue tint to it. That looks pretty good. Lighter than that. Let's see what that does. There we go. Nice. Oh, you can barely see it. I love that. Even lighter. But anyway, you just play around. You do as many of these as you like. You don't need to overcrowd the painting. It's up to you how many you think you need. Maybe four, five, or six, or seven on this side. Something long in there. Not too, too many. Just, just enough. Well, now I'm going to take several different shades of yellow, going from very, very pastel, see this, very pastel and pale yellow, all the way down to kind of a vibrant yellow-green. Start with this pale yellow, and even maybe just a fraction touch of a little bit of blue. <laughs> Not much, oh, very little, very little, a little more white. See that? So you can make this little, little pile of color that goes from one to another. I like that, because then you can kind of start on one side and work your way down through the painting. Okay, that was a lot of explanation for not a really big deal. Right up here. Let's go ahead and begin working on just the background trees. Could I have done them first? Yes, but that would have been done in the correct order. And you know me, if, you know, I can't do things in the right order. Just, just not going to happen. <laughs> so there you go. I'm just going to delicately touch. It's okay for it to mix with that background and become kind of more soft and muted. That's a good thing. That gray, let it, some kind of dragging in. I want it to pick up, see that? I want it to pick up that gray. And honestly, I'm going right over these trees. It won't matter. You're not going to notice. The filbert brush is really, really getting the job done today. There we go. Of course, this is oils. I'm using a 14 by 18 canvas. And... I do that because it films better. But I am using oils today, not acrylic. <laughs> Maybe up in here, see, now we got all this blank area. We can begin kind of trying to make some extra trees and whatnot happen just by touching with the brush, forming these little trees. Nothing too crazy. Now, as we see, as we go down, we go into some of these other colors, get a little more yellowy. That's a good thing. So we'll build this out slowly, but surely I'm not going to rush it. There is no rush. No rush. Tiny, tiny little strokes. The faster you go, the larger the strokes tend to be. The slower you go, the tinier, the more fine, and the more delicate these little strokes are, and the better it looks for this sort of a thing. It's tiny. I'm just using the very point of that brush. I'm not going smashing it in too much to where it would be too large of an effect. And then if you should, you want your trees back, you just pull them right back over. Super easy. Well, now I'm going to place in a few carefully done trees. Carefully because with as light as that background is, you don't have much of a chance to fix this. So do it slowly. And I don't mean to say that, well, you can't fix it. Yeah, you probably could fix it, but it's going to take some time and it's way easier to just do it right the first time. There you go. Look at that. See, I don't know. Probably that's probably enough trees. I don't know. I like I kind of like the way that that's layered. I do have two big ones there, two big ones here, maybe a third, like a little, maybe even just a little tiny one coming off of this one. I don't know. I just don't want it to be too balanced. While I got this brown and black, I had to squirt out some more black. I was running out. Let's get uh, let's get some shadows in here. 
some proper, actual, deep, dark shadows. Glop it on. A lot of this is just going to be dark. Oh, uh, let's see, right in here, probably run that crack right along here. See, it was good to just get this underpainted. You may want to wipe that off with a towel if, it, if you can't get this on dark. But if you hold your brush like this, it's very stiff. Hold it flat like that, and it's a little layers on a little easier. Well, now I'm going to finally get to highlight this little sandbar down here. Just scrub a little bit on as your brush runs out. I think it'd be a good idea to probably come back up in here. Just sprinkle some color on the bank here. Of course, this would be the same color. It's probably all similar kind of stuff. These rocks here, I would anticipate they would be kind of a similar color. Ooh, just a quick little hit. That doesn't require a lot, does it? Just a, just a touch here and there. Oh, that's nice looking. Yeah, right up in here. Don't want to go so bright that it's distracting. I think just a just a little bit on that one since it is the closest of these little these little eroded areas. So, so that'll be good to get that established. There's my color right here. Kind of just a yellow ochre and white mix. We'll just sort of indicate that hey, maybe there is something happening there, but it's not too intense. Okay. Good. Isn't that nice? back to a little bit more of a brighter color. We'll just work on getting a little bit of action here. Just dabbing, you know, try to create these little stones or little dirt patches. I'm just trying to make it interesting. Make it interesting. Well, I've got my quarter inch flat brush here. And just with a couple strokes, I want to indicate a little tiny waterfall back here. You know, the more, of course, the more you go over it, the softer it gets. So it just depends on how soft you need it to be. Something along those lines, probably okay. And I'll just work that around subtly, very subtly. You know, I don't think we need to go too crazy on this at all. Just enough. There's my color, by the way, just a blue and white. Super, super basic. I'm going to drop just a few leaves up here. I'm not going to go crazy. I've got my detail brush, my little detail round brush. You could use a filbert brush, but this just changes it up a little. These are slightly closer leaves, and I think they should look a little different. Maybe just a little more individual. Furthermore, the other thing we've got to watch out for here is that I don't really go over the tree trunks until I'm until I'm done with this color because it'll lighten, the light color will be darkened by that trunk. So, oh, there you go. Very delicate little leaves. I think a less is more approach here, for sure. Pretty good though, pretty good. Yeah, get a few more out there. We really don't need a whole lot of anything, just highlight or anything else. It's just the just a couple of these little leaves and call it good. You don't don't go so crazy that it that you cover up all the beautiful stuff that's going on here, all that lightness in the background. So now I'm using a liner brush to add in some of these last limbs, the final details. I know these trees haven't been highlighted, but I'm probably just gonna hide, highlight them with a liner brush. It'd be so easy because I don't need much. If I needed a lot, I wouldn't do that, but they're just not that big, they're very skinny. Anyway, because we have so little paint in the background, I've got my paint for my liner brush a little thicker than normal. You see that? See how it's actually quite a bit thicker. Just enough to kind of show some amount of detail. Hey, there is something going on back there, and that's it. I'll make it busy. <laughs> They're so easy to make it busy, isn't it? Let's go over here to the right side. Now there's more paint on this side, so we may have to thin it down a little more. We'll see. Now I'll get a little bit of just a, a light tan color. It really doesn't matter. Anything you got laying down here on your palette's probably okay. Add a little gray to it. There's some gray. Okay, let's see what this does. We'll start on these trees. It's fairly thin. It's not as thin as, you know, like water or ink. It's a little thicker than that. I'm just going to place on a couple of very, very slim highlights, just kind of a silver lining on these tree trunks. I really don't need anything else. I love the liner brush. I've been highlighting trees more and more with the liner brush. I mean, it doesn't take the place of something like a three quarter flat or a filbert brush for doing the trees, but you can, if you're not doing very large trees, 
you can get very nice results with a liner brush. And sometimes it's more convenient. The paint comes off the brush so nice when you do it like that, doesn't it? Oh, it's good stuff. There we go. Get those nice sharp bark textures. That really just helps to make it stand out. You know, doesn't have to be perfect, just enough dark up there because I want to keep those leaves dark, dark, so we won't go up too far. And if you want to go a little, a little bit of highlight on the side, we can too. To get these highlighted and really that just helps to finish out and clean the painting up. It's looking pretty good. Well, that about wraps up our painting for today. It was really fun playing around with these soft pastel colors. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos, and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.